Okay, I think we're live. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Dr. Boz again, and this is I think my fourth a YouTube live, so be nice. I am in a park in uh, Nashville. Uh, it's clearly not South Dakota. Two of these uh, videos ago, my video actually literally froze because in South Dakota it snowed and my camera like didn't glitch, it actually froze. Today, I am in Nashville and I am here for some meetings but had so many people asking questions about a ketogenic diet and the calories. So I'm gonna give you an explanation about ketogenic and calories and how the calories are important, but there's some caveats. I do want you to tune in to the end because I'm doing an experiment. I have a, um, I have a coupon code that gets you a free audiobook. And so at the end, I'm going to give you a 13 digit code. And unfortunately, it's only gonna to go to one person, but I'm trying to see if it will uh, go all the way through. So this, this uh, episode is because I've had literally hundreds of people type in and say, Doc, um, I'm underweight, can I do a ketogenic diet? I don't need to lose weight, is a ketogenic diet good for me? Um, several who've said, you know, I'm following keto and I'm making ketones, but I'm not losing weight. What's the matter? And then if you, if you do read my book, there's a, a chapter about how I say, do not look at calories, do not look at calories. And so this is to explain that because it's not, uh, it's not quite that simple. When you look at an audience of people that come into my clinic, uh, that uh, is overwhelmingly uh, elderly people or in their elderly people with, with diabetes, but also people in their 40s, 50s, 60s with diabetes. And, or they're pre-diabetic, or they've had those 50 pounds for 10, 20, 30 years. And so when I was writing the book, I was definitely focused on not just my mom, who had been overweight, and she's in her 70s. Uh, she had cancer, and so there was a different caveat that we were talking to when it was my mom. But the book is really meant to be a beginner's guide of what's the nuts and bolts in an understandable way to understand the ketogenic diet. And so there are some parts of that book that don't quite translate to the bigger population, and one of these is calories. And I can tell I didn't do such a great job of educating on that because of all the questions. So instead of typing all of you back or hiring an assistant to type all of you back because they don't always, it's hard to answer these questions unless you take care of patients, I am going to use this as a way to answer your questions. So, calories do matter, okay? Let's start with the skinny person who types in and says, I'm 52 years old, I have rheumatoid arthritis, I wanna know if the ketogenic diet will be good for me, and I'm, uh, I'm underweight. She's like 105 pounds and she's five foot two. So that's pretty thin, uh, can't afford really to lose much weight. And what I would tell her is, you have an inflammatory disease. That is the problem with rheumatoid arthritis, is that when the inflama inflammatory markers are turned on and pushing your disease process, it ages those joints so much faster. We need to turn that off. You're only 52. We need those joints to work for another, hopefully 40 years plus. And in order to do that, we have to turn off that inflammatory process. So what does that mean? What does that have to do with a ketogenic diet? Well, a ketone is two things. First and foremost, it's a fuel, it's an energy source. So you take a scoop of ketones in a can and you turn them into fuel into your body once you absorb them, and they're gonna give you energy. That energy source means you're not gonna be using other energy sources that are stored in fat cells. So when you add ketones to your system by an outside source, just say some powder, a ketones, a ketone powder, that's still energy. Uh, and when the energy is fueling through your system, it is stable. It doesn't go up and down like uh, the glucose does. It's a nice long four hour energy source, but it also has very, um, um, very much counts as, as it's gonna turn off using any other calories. So if you're a 105 pound, uh, 52 year old rheumatoid arthritis patient, and you're saying, but doc, if I do this ketogenic diet, will I have the privilege of the benefits of the ketones, but I don't wanna lose any weight. And the answer is, this is the danger of doing things live, is there's somebody backing up a truck right in front of me with a really loud noise, sorry. Um, the key though is, if you look at a, uh, adding those calories into your diet, you are going to find, uh, okay, don't die. 
<laughs> you are going to find that those calories matter and they are a very big part of uh, the energy balance for whether or not you're going to lose weight. Um, putting on weight is what actually my mom and I did the first six weeks that we did the ketogenic diet. We went overboard. We did everything made with heavy whipping cream. We did sour cream on top of every piece of food that we ate. Our calorie intake was very high. And as a result, we felt amazing. Those ketones were definitely flowing. We had ketone strips positive every day for those first six weeks. Her cancer number did come down, but we did not lose weight. Uh, we did not lose any weight. <laughs> it took us months of uh, really figuring out that when you consume the calories, even on a ketogenic diet, they do matter. In the book I talk about, don't look at the calories, don't look at the calories. And the reason for that is, when my diabetic or overweight patients are looking for the chemistry shift needed to lose weight, the chemistry out trumps the calories when you first begin. The chemistry is get that insulin down. When you consume fat, yes, it's a very high calorically dense uh, substance, but more importantly, it is a, uh, it's a turn off to the production of insulin. When you consume fat, you do not produce insulin. When you consume carbs, you produce insulin. So I talk about in the book, you gotta count to 20. 20 carbs is how you're gonna get to a ketogenic diet in most of the ways for my patients. Uh, you can stimulate ketones two other ways. One of them is to fast, to go with no calories, no food, uh, and I'll contend that that isn't my favorite way and I lose a lot of patients when they start out with a strict fast. Uh, it's just too many shifts at once. It's like the guy who smokes three packs a day it says, I'm gonna quit on January 1st. That's a lot to go from three packs a day to zero. Um, most of my patients eat a lot of carbohydrates. To take them down to 20 carbohydrates and then learn how to sustain, uh, many times what happened to my mom and I happens to many people. We were eating a lot. We were used to eating you know, three, maybe four meals a day, or if you count snacks, at least four meals a day. And on a ketogenic diet, that calorie reduction only happens after your appetite is suppressed. And that is also a hormone response. So when you look at the hormones that rise with fat, that cholecystokinin shuts off your drive to want to eat. I mean, it is what happens when we consume fat. Uh, that isn't an accident, that's very chemically induced. But if you've been on a low-fat diet, you haven't produced cholecystokinin in a long time. So you're just gonna trickle the cholecystokinin for the first couple of weeks that you're on a ketogenic diet. And that's kind of what happened to us too. It took us several weeks before we kind of said, well, I'm really not hungry for breakfast in the morning. Why am I eating it? And you know, that journey of improving the outcomes by listening to our body, our hormones had to get in shape for that. So <clears throat> let me recap what I just said. For this thin woman, who is a rheumatoid arthritis patient, the reason we want you on a ketogenic diet, if you are my patient, what I would want you on a ketogenic diet for is because of the second, uh, second uh, property of a ketone. A ketone is fuel, but a ketone is also a signal within the body, a hormone signal if you would, that shuts down inflammation. And even if you just put ketones in a can into your, uh, into your, um, your diet, like you buy the supplements, that alone can shut down some of the inflammation and can be a great first step for people getting their brains uh, healed, getting that inflammation out of their brain, getting the inflammation out of the joints of this young woman at 52. And in the bigger picture of why are ketones, uh, <laughs> I, I describe them almost like snake oil. Uh, the snake oil salesman from uh, you know 100 years ago would go around from town to town and he'd tell you that this snake oil was going to fix everything. And you know when you start to study the ketogenic diet, it kind of feels that way. Like, wow, it helps with that, and it helps with this, and it helps with that. And of course, what's the little thread that's behind that? Uh, really twofold. Number one, it's a hormone signal that shuts down inflammation. And you don't turn off that signal one day of ketones, it does take several weeks. Um, number two, it's an energy source that is much longer than glucose, it's at least four hours long, and that energy source doesn't spark insulin. And insulin is very inflammatory, or connected with that inflammation milieu in the body. 
We love that when you turn down inflammation, you can now tap into your fat cells and use that fat as, as fuel. When the insulin is high on a carb-filled diet, you, your fat cells are gonna stay locked forever. And that's why at the beginning of a ketogenic diet, I talk about do not look at your calories at first, just focus on carbs. It's a really big mind shift to, to do a different way of thinking uh, as opposed to the um, you know counting calories or the diet that is rich in uh, carbs. Um, when, when I ask people to count calories, they're gonna have to use an app. Uh, when I ask people to count carbs, at first they use an app just to look up how uh, how much is in a, a, a tomato, <laughs> how much are in pistachio nuts, and it can seem a little confusing uh, until they kind of get in their head, these are the things I eat and these are the thing, this is the carbs I have. So sticking under 20 carbohydrates a day for those first two weeks, I do not want you looking at calories. But if you get into that third, fourth, or fifth week of a ketogenic diet and you're like, well, I'm running into trouble with too much, um, I'm not losing weight. The first thing I'm gonna do is say, now remember that part where I said, don't look at your calories? This is a, cal your calories do matter. Um, we look at, when I'm taking care of cancer patients, something called a calorie-restricted ketogenic diet. And that is really to get those glucoses down into like a 50 or a 60. I mean, I've had one guy in the last day or so text me with a, uh, a calorie or a glucose of 47. And he's like, doc, is that, is that dangerous? And I said, how do you feel? And that's the most powerful part about when you shift those sugars down immediately, people feel terrible. It's called hypoglycemic. They get hungry, they crave food, they get shaky, they're very crabby. But when your body has adapted, and specifically those brain cells, your body can fuel from ketones once those cells have kind of unrusted the parts that you haven't used in a while. So as you look at that third week of ketosis, uh, um, that's when I, I get a lot more confident when I see a blood glucose of, you know, in the 50s or 60s that I'm just simply asking, listen to your body, how do you feel? And if your glucose numbers are that low, I would contend that uh, the only way you're typing me a message is if you actually feel okay. Um, what would be great is to be able to measure your ketones at the same time. And that's where we get into some of the ratios of um, what is the sugar, blood sugar, and what is the ketone uh, number. And I, I cover that in other, other videos. So let's see if I got everything. I, I wanted to say the three ways to get into ketosis are fasting, that's really hard. Number two is you can put ketones in a can and just to have that as your first step, getting your body used to seeing a ketone. Um, or you can cut the carbs to 20. Uh, none of those talk about um, what to do next and that is when calories, uh, uh, when the time of calories matter, it's when the body has been keto adapted. And in that setting, I recommend that you do pay attention to calories if you're stalling out on weight. Most of the time the calories have reduced because patients really truly are listening to their bodies and only eating when hungry. And because of that surge of cholecystokine in their brain doesn't signal hunger very often. You do not make that hormone in the first couple of weeks of uh, ketosis or at least most of my patients don't because they haven't made it in a long time. They're super afraid of fat. Um, and then the final thing with all the noise in the background is two things. Ketone is a fuel first and foremost and ketone is a signal to reduce inflammation. It does two really important things in the body. So I said um, that I would give you a code at the end of this for one person to go to Audible and download my book. This is a free code that, um, actually wait a minute, I want to make sure I got to put my glasses on and look closely at some of these. Um, Oh, so there's one, uh, another question about um, ketones on a urine stick. I, w I did actually want to cover that. So last question, and then I will give you the code. That's a little teaser. When somebody's dipping and looking at those ketone sticks and it's not turning positive, I have a, a YouTube video that's a little, that's edited, not just live, um, uh, talking about measuring your ketones. I encourage you to go li look at that because it covers it much nicer. But there's an important thing. Those ketone sticks are cheap and in your pharmacy and I highly recommend that you put two or three of them in your pocket for the day when you're first beginning a ketogenic diet. Measuring your ketones helps you to, to have the confidence that you're doing it. Uh, but remember, those, those are, are litmus uh, sticks and if they're exposed to air for too long, they go bad. So those three that you put in your pocket, you're just gonna have to throw away. Don't worry, they're like 10 cents a strip or something really cheap. 
So throw them away if you don't use them, but access every time you go to the bathroom is a really, help, really helpful confidence booster when you first go ketogenic. The second thing is that if you are, remember ketones in the urine is a waste product. It means that your body did not use that fuel. And at first, your mitochondria are so confused, they don't know how to use a ketone, they don't remember. And so you're, you're spilling all of these uh, ketones into your urine and that's why that stick turns positive. But as your mitochondria wake up and they are able to snitch in the, the, mito, in the ketones and use them as fuel, well then they're not gonna end up in your urine. You're not wasting them, they're using them. And that's usually when they feel better. But what happens is sometimes you can pee on a stick and you're like, Doc, I'm totally following the rules. I feel great. Why are my ketones so low? And the answer to that is you don't have uh, as many that you're wasting. You're more efficient with your use of ketones. So um, yeah, check out the other YouTube that's more scripted because I do go all, through all three ways of checking ketones and the pros and cons. Um, all right, so here's the, here's the code. So this is how this works. In Audible, if you're an Audible user, uh, if you're a first time user, there's a link on my Facebook page and the YouTube page, I think the YouTube page, um, where you get uh, the first book for free if you've never signed up for Audible before. But if you are an Audible user and you want to use the coupon to download the book, um, Any Way You Can is the name of the book and I would highly recommend that you read it. <laughs> it's just a little biased, huh? Uh, but seriously, I love doing these videos. I love doing this teaching throughout the universe of YouTube and Facebook and I, I'm shocked that I have this little sticker next to the book that says best seller. Not quite sure what the metrics of that mean but it was really cool when it showed up. Um, I'm totally reaching for how many books do you have to sell to get it on a New York Times bestseller? I don't know but I think if everybody watching this video or everybody on my YouTube channel bought the book any way you can, we would totally get there. And I think that'd be super cool for this almost accidental book about a love letter to my mom on ketosis has turned into helping so many people. So if you have the book, great, thank you. Write a review. I'm new at this author stuff and every one of those Amazon reviews is amazing. Uh, I read all of them. And the second thing is, is if you have bought the book and you know someone that could benefit from it, uh, just give them the challenge of the first two chapters. By the time they get through that, it's usually they've captured their interest and it, they see it's a really easy read, a really relational story of what happened to my mom. All right, so here's the code, write it down. It should be 13 numbers. The first one is X66PQPDA2. LF 9 L. All right, this is Dr. Vaz signing off. Thanks for checking in. I'm sorry I didn't read more of the comments, but the sun is super bright on the screen so I can hardly see them. Uh, I will be better about that next time. Thanks for tuning in and share this with those people who are arguing with you about calories and ketones. Thanks again.